Part two, and I would just like to ask, does anybody else like freak out over typos like I do? In the last video, I typed out a little caption about my previous videos on Zach Bowen and Addie Hall, and I wrote precious. It made me want to delete the entire video, but I didn't, so here we go with part two. So they said that Jaren wouldn't have had a problem getting in the car with these two because they were familiar to everybody who worked on Bourbon Street, but I would like to go on record and say that I'm not getting in the car with these two. Um, but Jaren was dedicated to taking care of her three-year-old, although the three-year-old was with the grandmother at the time. She still took care of her, and she was behind on bills, so I can see her leaving with them. The police are going to figure out later on that those two had no intentions of paying her any money or bringing her anywhere to do anything but murder her. When they got back to this couple's house, one of them held her down and one of them stabbed her in the heart and then they chopped her into little pieces and the neighbor would say the next morning before dawn he saw terry struggling with some large garbage bags moving her body which was in pieces the neighbor said you could smell bleach all the way to the street like they cleaned it out which explains why the cops found no evidence there barely anything i think they might have found a shoestring they thought was hers and cadaver dogs hit on a burn pile they found like a telephone circuit board that was burnt and a couple of items of clothing that were burnt but they weren't definitively linked back to jaren this neighbor says that terry always gave him a lunatic vibe he said once he was in the yard doing jumping jacks in his underwear just screaming all kind of obscenities so definitely somebody you would not want to be around one of the wildest theories about this is that magic and voodoo that underworld contributed to the motive here that's never been proved and actually they just kind of kept it out of court because it couldn't be proved but they found like an altar and a lot of things in this couple's home a lot of objects that had to do with the occult and voodoo and it probably is not a coincidence in my opinion that this happened on the night of the venus transition this is like a very rare celestial event and the two of those Margaret and Terry spoke a lot about that in some of their emails back and forth once he's in prison. The Venus transit is when Venus passes in front of the sun, and it's sometimes associated with sacrifices of love. So there's no weapon, there's no DNA that links them. This is all circumstantial stuff. But Terry, unbeknownst to Margaret, first of all, Terry had a lot of aliases, so she didn't even know his real name when they got arrested. He was wanted for failing to register as an offender. So they can easily pick him up on a warrant and put him into federal prison. So he's not going anywhere at the time. And on to part three.